Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show that covers all things marketing. The GSMC Marketing News Podcast gives you the latest marketing news, from what major businesses have planned for the coming year, to the newest trends in advertising, from podcasts, digital and streaming, to the old standbys of radio, television, and billboards. Whether you're a marketing agent or a business trying to expand your brand, you've come to the right place. The GSMC Marketing News Podcast starts now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the GSMC Marketing Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. Thank you so much for joining me today on another hour-long episode of the GSMC Marketing Podcast. We've been doing these hour-long podcasts for a couple of weeks now, and I'm really enjoying it. I think it gives us an opportunity to really dig into bigger concepts and really explore new topics, especially when we're dealing with topics that have a lot of information and a lot of detail to go through. I think it's really important that we give them enough time and attention to really understand what we're talking about. And today's topic is no exception. We are talking about Disney and Disney's marketing. So for like the Two of you that don't know what Disney is, or the one of you that doesn't know what Disney is, Disney is basically the biggest entertainment industry in the world. But what I want to look at today is I don't want to take a look at their entertainment. I don't want to talk about their movies. Well, we'll talk about their movies a little bit. But what I want to talk about is their marketing strategies and how you can use them in your own marketing. Because obviously we don't have Disney's budget, but I mean we can use Disney's ideas as inspiration to help guide us with our own marketing strategies and develop the same quality of product that Disney delivers to their audience on a regular basis. That's what I want for you. That's what I want for my marketing. So we're going to take a look at how to do that and why to do that in today's episode. But to start off the podcast, let's talk about what is new in the marketing world. Downtown Greensburg Project is looking for public feedback on how to show off its good side. Downtown Greensburg has recently started a new project called Downtown Greensburg Project. Very creative name. It's in the early stages, but it's basically the idea that they're trying to make it more of a community. They're not the same old city, and they're trying to show that they're a lot stronger now and that they have a new brand, and it's going to be a lot more focused on community. In order to show that they're really invested in the community, they are hosting an online survey right now and public focus groups to learn how people see Greensburg, what they like about the city, and what they don't. Jessica Hickey, who is the director of the Downtown Greensburg Project, has said, We're not the same old city we've been for a long time. We want more collaboration. We want a stronger city. So we wanted to create a new brand to help it move it along a little bit. Although the rebranding effort will definitely include things like a new logo and commercials and ads, they want to do more than just that. They don't want to just make it look like it's a whole new city on a digital platform. They want it to actually feel like a whole new city, which is why they're stressing that it is so important that they get the feedback from the community. And we talk about stuff like this a lot on the marketing podcast, but I always want to stress how important it actually is that you always know what your audience actually wants, what your audience actually likes, and what your audience doesn't like is just as important as what they do like. So doing something like what Jessica Hickey is doing with the Downtown Greensburg Project by hosting an online survey and hosting public focus groups, she's able to get that feedback in a very direct way. And I would definitely advise anybody who maybe is unsure of what their audience actually wants to do the same thing because it is a very strategic marketing move that will give you honest results and will give you feedback that you're actually looking for. The second story we're going to take a look today is that Sony marketing vet Christina Birch has launched a new collective called the Roy G. Biv Collective. So the Roy G. Biv Collective is going to be a new consulting firm which will provide media, tech, and lifestyle companies with powerful strategic narratives across their positioning, creative branding, messaging, and overall vision. The Sony vet Christina Birch has this to say, 
While most movie marketing campaigns are data-driven, I feel there's a greater need to access more of the emotional underpinnings in these campaigns. When I decided to embrace the PI network, I saw an opportunity to demonstrate the validity of my approach and provide a storytelling narrative to a project that was outside of the entertainment industry. Storytelling does not have to be specific to any platform. So Birch definitely has an emotional attachment to this and it's definitely going to, I think, shine through with all of the products that they are able to create with the Roy G. Biv Collective. So I'm definitely very interested to see what will come out of it, what kind of content will be created, because when things are made from emotion, they can be really beautiful and they can be really captivating Because I do agree with her that a lot of things in marketing are data driven. I've definitely encouraged you all to take a look at your data because it is important. I won't lie. It's important. But I do always want to stress that it is also important that we actually like what we're doing and that it actually means something to us. And so that to me is really what the Roy G. Biv Collective is doing. They are creating content that is actually important to people and it is actually important to the people that are creating it. So very interesting to see and I can't wait to hear more about this collective. Our last story of today comes from Starbucks. Starbucks has recently done an environmental assessment unveiling that the whipped cream added to their drinks emits 50 times as much greenhouse gases as the company's private jet. Overall, dairy products are the biggest source of carbon dioxide emissions across the coffee giant's operation and supply chain. So they are currently asking customers to maybe ditch the strictly dairy drinks and maybe supplement with one of their dairy alternatives. They do have like almond milk and soy milk and all those other alternatives you could be using while they are trying to come up with a solution to whipped cream because they are looking to come up with a plant-based ingredients that will make a whipped cream that hopefully tastes the exact same as whipped cream, but does not emit nitrous oxide, which is a greenhouse gas. Starbucks is also going to aim to lower the cost of dairy alternatives, so hopefully that will help their audience definitely buy their products and listen to what they're saying of don't buy our milk anymore, instead maybe look at an alternative. So CEO Kevin Johnson said, we know this journey will be challenging. We know we can't do this alone. And we know this will require others to join us. Such an impactful statement from such an impactful man and person that honestly, I was blown away by this whole story. I think it's amazing. And next time I go to Starbucks, I will definitely be going for a milk alternative. I am a fan of whipped cream. But this study really did open my eyes to the issues with it. And I find it so interesting that Starbucks is willing to share this information with its audiences in such an open and honest way because they want to make a difference. They don't want to hide it. They don't want to shelter their audience from the real world problems with their products. And I think that is so interesting from both a human standpoint as someone who drinks Starbucks, but it's also so interesting from a marketing standpoint because We always try to just share the good and not share the bad, but sometimes the bad needs to be shared to show what kind of company you actually are and what kind of company morals you really have, which is what I think the CEO, Kevin Johnson, really did with that quote and what I think Starbucks is doing by trying to come up with a different alternative to milk. So very interesting stories from the world of marketing. Please let me know in the review down below or reach out through social media what you think of Starbucks and their alternative to milk drink story. What you think of the Sony marketing vet, Christina Birch launching her Roy G. Biv collective. And what you think of the downtown Greensburg project and how they are looking for public feedback to really get this party going. I definitely think these are three great examples of marketing and how different types of marketing can really show what kind of brand you are and really demonstrate what you're looking for from your audience. So definitely let me know your thoughts on these stories through social media or in the review down below. Okay, everyone, we're going to go ahead and take our first break from the podcast. But when we come back, we are going to be talking about Disney and all things Disney marketing. We're going to start off by talking about 
why I think you should follow their marketing and how you can maybe start taking ideas from them in the idea of taking ideas for inspiration sake. Please do not steal from Disney. I do not think that would be a good idea, but we are going to talk about Disney and why they are so successful. So stay tuned for that because you are listening to the GSMC Marketing Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mackenzie Jaquish, and I'll be right back. Golden State Media Concepts Technology Podcast covers everything tech. The hottest mobile phones, tablets, games. We review it, rate it, test it. Whether you're Microsoft or Apple, Android or iPhone, we'll give it to you again and again. Black and white. The Golden State Media Concepts Technology Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Marketing Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mackenzie Jaquish, and before the break, we were talking about what is new in the marketing world. We talked about how Starbucks has recently released their environmental assessment showing that their whipped cream is emitting 50 times as much greenhouse gases as the company's private jet. They're talking about asking people to withhold from ordering milk and instead maybe order your drinks with a milk alternative while they work on an alternative for their whipped cream product using more plant-based ingredients. So very interesting story coming from Starbucks and we talked about how they're not shielding their audience from any negative news and instead embracing the negative news with their audience so that they can come out of this a lot stronger. We talked about Christina Burt, who is the Sony marketing vet, and how she has recently launched the Roy G. Biv Collective. This is going to be a consulting firm which will provide media and tech and lifestyle companies with powerful strategic narratives across their positioning, creative branding, messaging, and overall vision. We also talked about Downtown Greensburg's new project, the Downtown Greensburg Project, and how they are looking for public feedback to really help with their marketing strategies and help move forward as a community. So again, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about any of those stories, write them in the review down below or reach out through social media because I would absolutely love to hear your thoughts on those. Now that we are back from our break, we are going to talk about Disney. So this whole episode is going to be focused on Disney marketing and how you can take inspiration from some of their old marketing campaigns and how you can really learn from what they've done well in the past and maybe some things that they could have done differently. So to start, let's just talk about Disney's budget. So the Disney's budget for their marketing ad spend from 2014 to 2018 was reportedly was reported an annual advertising expense between 2.6 to 2.9 billion US dollars over the past 5 years. In 2018, the figure stood at 2.8 billion. So why am I talking about Disney's marketing budget? Because I know a lot of you probably don't have that budget. That budget is for the world's biggest entertainment industry. Obviously, they're going to have a really big budget for their advertising. But the reason I bring it up is because I think that if they have that much money, they're obviously doing everything they can with their marketing. They're not going to miss out on any opportunity. They are not going to miss out on any chance, any trend. They have the money to spend. And even though we don't, we should take notes from them because they are basically showing us what is possible. So if you're ever feeling, you know, lost or stuck and you're looking for inspiration and you don't know where to turn from, definitely look at the Walt Disney's advertising because they have the money to create literal magic. And that's why I brought up the money because Disney is a brand that has stood the test of time and will stand the test of time. I'm sure my grandkids will know what Disney movies are. 
and their budget will grow, their marketing will grow, everything will continuously push and grow to be better, which is what you should always be doing. You may not have a Disney budget, but you do have Disney as an inspiration as to what to push towards. You still have the ability to push. You still have the ability to dream up new projects for yourself. So really what I wanted to point out by bringing up their budget for their advertising is how, although you may not have 2.9 billion US dollars, you do have the ability to push and you do have the ability to try new things. Okay, now let's talk about, we talk about what they're spending, let's talk about what they're making. The marketing value of Disney's newest streaming service, Disney Plus, is valued at $108 billion. Whoa! Disney announced that it gained 10 million subscribers on the first day of Disney Plus, and shares of Disney are up 6% since the new streaming service was launched. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm only talking about Disney Plus when it comes to the profits. And it's for the same reason I brought up their budget for their advertising. Disney Plus was definitely something they had never done before, something that they weren't used to, but they knew it was something that they had the money to do and they had the resources to do. So why not try? Why not push the company in a new direction and try something new and see if it'll be successful. And it was. Guys, Disney Plus is beating Netflix. Disney Plus is taking over the entertainment world. I mean, they're maybe bringing back the Lizzie McGuire show. If they can do that, what can't they do? I mean, I'm not the only one who maybe thought that Disney Plus might just be a nostalgic pull, might just get people to watch old episodes of Hannah Montana, But it's doing so much more than that. It has new shows. It has new opportunities to grow and develop its content further. But it would never have been able to do that if it didn't first take that leap of creating the new streaming service, of creating that new way of marketing, that new platform for themselves. So I'm not suggesting you start a streaming service. But I am suggesting you take a look at the world around you and you take a look at what you're spending money on because Disney was spending money and making money off of Netflix. They had their movies on there. And take a look at what you could be doing differently to improve your own success because that's what Disney constantly does. It takes a look at what it's done. It takes a look at what it's going to do and it improves on that. It builds on that. It, they are constantly growing. You are never done when it comes to Disney. There will always be a new opportunity. There will always be a new movie coming out. There will always be a new something coming from Disney. So that's really what I want us to focus on for the rest of today's episode is what is new? What is happening and how are they pushing themselves to that new level so that we can all really appreciate the amount of work that it actually takes to push ourselves in our marketing. So with all that in mind, I know that that was a lot of like facts and numbers getting thrown at you guys. So we're going to go ahead and take a short break from the podcast. But when we come back, we are going to be talking about ways you can actually follow the entertainment giant. I'm going to give you the top five things that they always do in their marketing that you can maybe take inspiration from. And I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to do that. So stay tuned for that because you are listening to the GSMC Marketing Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mackenzie Jayquish, and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play.
back to the GSMC Marketing Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mackenzie Jaquish, and thank you for joining me on today's episode. On today's episode, we are talking about Disney's marketing. Disney is one of the biggest companies in the world. They are by far the biggest entertainment industry in the world, and that is proven by what we talked about before the break, how much money they spend on their marketing. It was reported that in 2018, they spent spent $2.8 billion on their advertising, but none of that goes to waste because Disney shares were up 6% just by introducing their new streaming service, Disney+. Plus. So a lot to think about when it comes to Disney and their marketing, and because they're so successful and because they have such a big budget, I thought it would be interesting to take a look at the top five ways that they use their marketing to create an image of their brand for themselves and also how they engage their audience with that brand. And really, let's take a look at where that $2.8 billion is going and how they use it. Because I'm breaking it down into five points so that these five points can be used in your own marketing. Point number one, customer immersion. So this definitely comes back to the Disneyland parks, the Disney World parks, and how when you go there, you can't see the outside world anymore. They actually use, this is an interesting side tangent, but they actually use this color called like go away green or forget me green that they paint stuff that the eye doesn't get attracted to so that you can't actually see it. And they paint things like warehouses or factories, not factories, They paint things like warehouses, uh, construction sites, new rides that haven't come up yet. They're painting them all this color of green to start so that when you're in Disneyland, you're totally immersed by what is going on at the actual park rather than what's going on in the outside world. Now, obviously, I don't think anyone listening to this podcast owns a theme park or is planning on starting a theme park. But you can still immerse your customers into your brand in the same way that Disney does. And the main way that Disney does this, and we're going to talk about it more, it's in a different point as well, but their consistent branding is always that they are a different world. It's that they are a magical place where dreams come true. They are the happiest place on earth. So if you have a brand that you're so committed to and you're not going to change it anytime soon, immerse your customers in it. Everywhere they look, in your store, on your website, on your social media, should express your brand. Nothing should go out that has nothing to do with your brand. Everything should be cohesive. Everything should be on par with what you want your brand to look like and what you want your brand to feel like. If you want people to feel happy and relaxed and comforted by your brand, say you're selling pillows, then everywhere they look when they come into your store, every time they turn on their phone and open your website or go on your Instagram, they should feel comforted and relaxed. So definitely take a look at your current branding. And I would suggest just doing an overhaul of your social media and your website and get rid of anything that does not fit the brand that you are trying to go for. Just basically do a spring cleaning. I know it's January, but do a spring cleaning of all that stuff and get rid of anything that does not fit anymore. The next one is continuous promotion. So something you'll notice about Disney, if I were to turn on my TV right now, if I were to go onto Disney's Instagram, I wouldn't just see them promoting one thing. I wouldn't just see them promoting Disney+. Plus. They continuously have things going on Sometimes over top of each other, sometimes one right after each other. Sometimes they have five things going on at once. And this is so that you're able to more diversify who your audience actually is. And we're going to talk about that more as well. Some of these points bleed into each other. But basically, again, if you're selling pillows and you really want to sell a soft pillow because some people prefer a soft pillow... But you also have this new like lavender cooling pillow that you want to sell for people who have trouble sleeping and have troubles falling asleep. Oh, what are you going to do? How do you sell both? Oh, no. Oh, no. Don't worry. I got you because what I'm telling you is that you need to promote them both at the same time. Now, this is tricky 
Disney has a lot of different formats for them to be able to promote this stuff on. Maybe there will be a trailer on my TV for Frozen 2. Maybe there will be an ad on my phone for Disney+. Plus, and maybe I'll go to Forever 21 and I'll see a t-shirt that has Mickey Mouse's 91st birthday on it. I don't know if it's that Mouse's 91st birthday. He just, he's looking old. So I'm taking a guess at his age. I'm sorry, Mickey. But what I'm trying to get at is if you don't have all of those places, then what you need to do is you need to get a little creative, but also be a little strategic about how your promotions are going to fall into each other so that you're able to do that continuous promotions. A really good example of this, just to go back to the pillow idea, just because I really like that as an example for this type of continuous promotion is if you're trying to sell a soft pillow and you're trying to sell a lavender scented pillow, find the common denominator between those two. They both relax you. So do a relaxing sale. And one week of the sale, you're selling the soft pillow. The other week, you're selling the lavender scented one. So there are tons of options and tons of different ways for you to cross promote things and have that continuous role of promotions going on in the same way Disney does. The next one is to have your brand and storytelling under control. So I told you this point was going to come back, but basically every time you look at a Disney movie, every time you look at a Disney toy or a piece of merchandise or a clothing item, or you're on Disney Plus, you're going to have a similar feeling and you're going to have a similar sense of what the brand is. And I think the best example is look at the advertisements for Frozen and The Lion King. Those are totally different movies, but you're going to get the same feeling from them. So again, really master your brand and make sure your brand has that storytelling element that Disney has because they do a really great job of even with just a photo telling their story and telling the story of Disney through an image. So try that out. That's definitely more of a, if it works for your brand, then try it. Either way, I definitely think that storytelling is an important component in marketing. So definitely sit down with your team and definitely take a look at what your story is and if your brand tells it appropriately. The next one is targeting audience segments with multi-channel strategies. So this is really interesting because, again, it bleeds into, like, continuous promotions because, like I said, Disney can have a commercial. They can have their website. They can have their Instagram. They can have clothing. But if you don't have all of those things, I want you to take a look at what you actually have because just having a website is not enough. Just having an Instagram is not enough. Just having a store is not enough. What I want you to consider is that one size does not fit all for your audience. So you need to learn how to target your audience with different channels and different marketing strategies. Maybe you realize that your lavender pillows are best sold to teenagers. Okay, well, teenagers use Instagram. So from now on, your Instagram is dedicated to those teenagers and those lavender scented pillows. Okay, you found out that your harder, cold, cooler, cooling pillows, I don't know, I'm not a pillow expert, your cooling, your memory foam pillows, okay, you find out that your memory foam pillows are best sold in store. Okay, so then when people come in store, have those right at the front of the store. What I'm trying to get at here, guys, is that Disney understands that people who are watching commercials aren't going to be the same people that are liking their Instagram photos. So they're going to use different content on their commercials than they are on their Instagram. You need to start doing the same as well because you need to understand that not one size of marketing fits all of your audience. The last one is, and this one is definitely, it's a little bit more like brand storytelling because it really will be, does this work for your company, does it not? But something that really that Disney does really, really well is they use nostalgia to establish and maintain customer loyalty. So for those of you that watched The Mandalorian, for those of you that heard about what season two is going to be about, you know that Baby Yoda was a huge player in that TV show and was a huge player in Disney's marketing. And they didn't have to do anything to support that other than just come up with the idea 
of Baby Yoda and focus a show on it. And although it has nothing to do with the Mandalorian in season one, season two is apparently going to be all about Baby Yoda. So they understand that, hey, this is a trend that caught on due to nostalgic reasons. Let's keep customers coming back by using that sense of nostalgia. So I'm not saying you need to use nostalgia directly, but find out what your brand does well and why your customers keep coming back and use that to establish and maintain your customer loyalty. Okay, everyone, we're going to go ahead and take a short break from the podcast. But when we come back, I'm going to give you five really great examples of Disney's work that they have done with their marketing. And we're going to talk about maybe what you can learn from that and how successful those campaigns were. So stay tuned for that because you are listening to the GSMC Marketing Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mackenzie Jaquish, and I'll be right back. Are you a business owner? Someone interested in the latest news that might affect your business? Then check out the GSMC Business News Podcast, a show dedicated to keeping you up to date on all things concerning business, technology, and the stock market. Get a head start on the day as we keep you updated on the latest goings-on on Wall Street, money, jobs, and technology. The GSMC Business News Podcast has you covered. to the GSMC Marketing Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mackenzie Jaquish, and thank you for joining me today. Before we left for our break, we were talking about the top five ways Disney uses their marketing. I broke it down into five points of how they are successful with their marketing and how you can use those tips in your own marketing. We talked about using nostalgia to establish and maintain customer loyalty. We talked about targeting audience segments with a multi-channel strategy. We talked about masterful brand storytelling that resonates with your audience and inspires them to buy and shop more. We talked about continuous promotions and customer immersion. So five really great points that Disney uses in their marketing strategies that I believe you are able to take some inspiration from and use in your own. So let me know in the comments down below or reach out through social media if you're interested in using any of those points or if you need them explained a little bit more or if you want to brainstorm with somebody on how you can take those points and use them in your own marketing. I'm totally here to do that for you. So definitely reach out through social media. Now that we are back from our break, let's talk about some examples of great work that has come from Disney's marketing department. Number one is Chewy, We're Home. So for those of you that saw the second teaser trailer for The Force Awakens, you know what I'm talking about. So the second second teaser trailer showed a shot of Harrison Ford with his closing line that said, Chewy, We're Home. And obviously Chewbacca was also there. Insert Chewbacca noise here. But (laughs) it's so interesting that Obviously, The Force Awakens was going to be a successful movie, but just the second teaser trailer alone, $2. billion was added to Disney's value by the success of this trailer. That's insane. And if you Google Chewy We're Home, you'll see more than 2 million results on that one line alone. So this is going back to the one point that we talked about. They're using nostalgia to remind their customers why they're, they like their products and why they should go see and invest in this new version of the product that although it might not be the exact same as the old one, it has similar elements that you really love, i.e., it won't be the same as the old Star Wars movies, but Harrison Ford is still in it and he's still playing Han Solo. So come check it out. Come invest your time and come invest your money with us. 
the Dream Big Princess campaign. So for those of you that are a girl or even a guy who grew up admiring the Disney princesses, you were probably, maybe you were shocked, maybe you weren't, when they came under fire over the recent years for being stereotypical and outdated tropes for women. Whether or not that is true is totally up for debate and is totally not useful within this podcast. But what is useful is how Disney dealt with that feedback, with that negative feedback. So obviously Disney gets negative feedback all the time. They are a huge company. They are constantly going to be getting feedback. But how they deal with it is so interesting. So how they deal with this is with the Dream Big Princess Initiative. So the campaign involved 19 female photographers from 15 countries creating positive images of strong female role models, including a surfing champion from Brazil and the youngest female to speak at the UN. Disney then donated $1 to the UN. That can't be right. Oh, donated $1 to the UN's Girl Up campaign every time one of the images was shared on social media. So I really love using this example for you guys because it's a way that Disney took a negative and turned it into a positive and really demonstrated their brand that, hey, we're not trying to hurt women. We're not trying to be like coming down on anybody. We're the happiest place on earth. We love everybody. Let's show you how much we love everybody by donating all this money, by doing this campaign, by telling young girls that they can dream big just like the princesses did and that that's not a bad thing. So super interesting how they were able to do that and how they were able to really push past all of that negative feedback and turn it into something really positive and really beautiful. Annie Leibowitz's Disney Dream Portraits. So from 2007 to 2014, and let me just say as a photographer, I'm like, that is a long time for a photography project. Like Annie Leibowitz, my hat off to you, girl, because that is amazing. But these were photographs of Hollywood stars and characters as iconic Disney princesses and villains. They were featured as print advertising and again appealed to the older So these were a photograph collection starring Hollywood actors and actresses and musicians in an iconic characters. So this was a photography project featuring famous actors and actresses dressed as iconic Disney characters that would be featured as print advertising. This appealed to parents and older fans of Disney because it showed them a little bit of their childhood, where it also engaged with a newer and younger audience as they were like, oh my gosh, Taylor Swift is Rapunzel? That is so cool. I want to go to Disneyland now. So super cool. And it added a little bit of that A-lister gloss to the brand, but it kept up with that Disney magic of we can do anything, including make Queen Latifah Ursula. So definitely just a way to, again, showcase the brand and showcase the limits of the brand and how if they have an idea, they run with it. Mickey Mouse's 90th birthday exhibit. So let me just say, earlier in the podcast, when I guessed that he was like 91, that really was a guess. Turns out he'd be 92 because this exhibit was in 2018, but Disney launched a special immersive art exhibit in Mickey Mouse's honor. It was located in New York City and the 16,000 square foot interactive museum housed Mickey themed artwork from both historical and contemporary artists, as well as installations including a life-size steamboat and ice cube shop, ice cream shop. Disney also released a number of merchandise collaborations with fashion and footwear brands such as Forever 21 and Vans to really help promote Mickey Mouse's 90th birthday. So I brought up this example for all of you guys because I find it so interesting that you wouldn't normally think of, well, one, an art exhibit, 
two Forever 21 and three Vans as like Disney brands or companies that Disney would partner with. But Disney wanted to partner with them, so Disney partnered with them. And it's just, again, showing the limitations of this brand and how they don't have any because they just do what comes naturally to them, which is create something special. And they reached out to other people that are also creating special things and share similar brand interests to create this really special thing while also celebrating themselves. So that's something that I want you guys to take away from this example is Mickey Mouse is 92 years old and they threw him a party. Maybe throw yourself a party at the end of the week just for getting through the week because marketing is hard and we can't live up to Disney's expectations. I'm not expecting you to, but I am expecting that you push in the same way that Disney pushes, but also remember to give yourself a pat on the back every now and then. All right, the top five. Oh my God. Number five, Frozen and Frozen's merchandise. So Frozen is the biggest animated movie of all time. Frozen drove an increase of 7% in merchandise revenue in 2014. And so for those of you that don't know this, Frozen came out in 2013. So they still drove a 7% increase in Disney merchandise a year after the film came out. So obviously I think, you know, Frozen's great. It's a good movie. I'm not here to rain on Frozen's parade. But the movie is so successful Because of the merchandise. There's a karaoke app. There's a Broadway show. There's clothing. There's ABC content. There's toys. There's shoes. There's posters. There's clocks. There's everything. And it was really interesting to see Disney advertise in this way. Because obviously there was always Disney merchandise. But it almost feels like Frozen was made with the intent to be merchandised. To be merchandised. Like, Olaf as a character serves no purpose to the plot, but he makes a very cute teddy bear and is really cute on his shirt and has funny catchphrases. So, he was made for marketing. And so, it's so interesting that they stuck to their old format of creating Disney movies, but they marketed them in a whole new way of using them as more of a merchandise seller rather than an actual form of entertainment. I'm not saying Frozen wasn't good. I am just saying take a look at the merchandise and take a look at how big it is outside of being like a two hour long movie. Like it's way bigger than that. So it's just super interesting to see how they marketed that movie and how successful selling the merchandise was. Okay, everyone, we're going to go ahead and take a break from the podcast. But when we come back, I'm going to give you five more examples of big things Disney has done with their marketing. And hopefully it will inspire you to also do some big things with your marketing. So stay tuned because you are listening to the GSMC Marketing Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mackenzie Jaquish, and I'll be right back. Are you looking for a podcast that gives you all of the latest news from the world of finance? Then check out the GSMC Financial News Podcast. We'll delve into the ups and downs of the stock market, changes in the economy, and news from the world of real estate and technology. From breaking news on the New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, or the overseas market, to updates on the bond market, if there's money to be made, we'll cover it on the GSMC Financial News Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Marketing Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mackenzie Jaquish, and thank you so much for joining me today. We've had so much fun on today's podcast, and we're going to continue having so much fun, because before the break, we were talking about 
five marketing campaigns that Disney has done. I talked a lot about them and hopefully inspired you to go out and create similar things or similar ideas. Do not steal from Disney. I cannot stress this enough. Do not steal from Disney, but take inspiration from them because they are doing some really amazing things. Now, to finish off our top 10 list, I'm going to give you the other top five marketing campaigns that Disney has done that are just huge and amazing and incredible, and I think we would all love to share in that glow a little bit. So we're going to take a look at those right now. The first one is Beauty and the Beast and Spotify Partnership. When the live action version came out in 2017, Spotify launched a campaign with Disney... Spotify launched their new partnership with Disney. It targeted free tier, free tier users. It targeted people using the platform with video ads pointing them towards the Beauty and the Beast microsite. That is where Spotify analyzed the user's music taste in order to link them to an associated room in Bell and Beast Magic Kingdom. So you could be in Belle's room, you could be in the dining room, you could be in the kitchen with Mrs. Potts. Each room explored the themes of the movie as well as giving you a wider selection of songs. So this was a super clever campaign that allowed people to, one, feel like special for a moment. I'm not going to lie to you. I used this and I remember feeling like, oh, I've unlocked like the Rose Room. Super cool. Now I can listen to I See the Light and True Love's Kiss and Beauty and the Beast. And it made you feel like you were playing a game that Disney cared that you were entertained and that, you know, you were having fun with the product. It also did something that we talked about earlier with them partnering with Forever 21 and bands is showing Disney's reach and Disney's collaboration, which I always hope that you guys are doing because collaboration with brands that share similar insight to what you're doing or similar ideas of what you're doing is super important and a super great way to build your brand and build your network. The next Disney campaign we're going to talk about is Healthily Ever After. So in 2016, Healthily Healthily Ever After was used by Disney characters to inspire families and their children to eat healthier and exercise more regularly. So it is a, I believe it's like a two minute long trailer, could be a little bit shorter, that is basically Disney characters doing very active things, eating very healthily, and then it shows real people eating healthily and being active. And so it was, again, a very clever way to show the brand's values and also help people in a real way and show that the company really does care. And I'm not saying if Disney really does care about people's health. I don't know. I don't work for Disney. But what I am saying is, is that their brand is that their brand is supposed to care about people. So obviously all of the content they're creating is going to be aimed at doing that. So healthily ever after was definitely a prime example of this. The next one we're going to talk about is the Jungle Book reboot. Now, the reason I want to talk about this is because the first ad that was ever shown for this movie had nothing to do with the movie. It was the 2016 Jungle Book reboot that I'm referring to, and the trailer included no songs. It didn't really show any moments from the movie, but it showed a little Baloo and yet does a feature plenty of moody and scary moments. But it does show a bunch of very moody and scary moments and really does create an idea of what the movie is going to be about. They topped it all off by showing the real life actors who will be voicing these beloved characters. And there were super famous people in there. I believe Beyonce's in this movie and John Oliver. I have not seen it. I apologize. But again, this trailer didn't show anything. But people lost their minds for it. People were so pumped about it. And it's by far one of Disney's most successful live action reboots to date. And the first trailer for it didn't show anything from the movie. So super interesting how Disney built suspense with this trailer and how they created an idea of mystery of, oh, what is it going to be about? I'm so excited. And they started a conversation by not starting a conversation at all. So super interesting how they did that and how you would be able to do that with your own products. The next one we are going to talk about is the Disney and West End pop-up. 
So this is super interesting because Disney's productions like The Lion King and Aladdin have been mainstays in London streets for theater for a number of years. In 2018, though, Disney launched a pop-up experiment in the capital to drive renewed interest in these shows. So it included a number of free daily events such as performances from cast members, stage makeup master classes, and demonstrations from the cast themselves. Visitors could also get an up-close look at the Lion King's masks and the Aladdin-themed sets. They could walk through them. So super interesting how Disney took a look at all of their ways they were marketing, all of the channels that they had, and they said... This one's doing really bad. How do we fix that? Let's restart the conversation. Let's get buzz going again. Let's, you know, work harder to make that more successful. To make that more successful. So super interesting how they chose to do it and how successful that product project was in 2018. The next one we are going to talk about is Disney's Eats. So Disney Eat is another way that Disney understands that their target demographic is always going to be different. That there isn't just one person who watches Disney movies. And like they talked about earlier, a commercial on Disney cable is going to be different than what I go and look at on my Instagram. And Disney Eats is no different. Disney Eats is a Instagram account that is solely dedicated to the food you can find on Disney. It shares recipes for Disney-themed snacks, Disney-themed desserts, and it's a way to just open up their audience in a new direction and demonstrate just more content that they're producing. They're always trying to produce more content and reach out to a new audience, which I think is super cool and super great. Okay, everyone, we're going to go ahead and take a break from the podcast. But when we come back, I'm going to give you top 10 companies that you can follow to do the same thing we've been talking about all episode, which is take inspiration from these companies that have really big budgets and really big marketing teams. In case you don't want to follow Disney, I'm going to give you 10 others that I think would be super helpful. So stay tuned for that because you are listening to the GSMC Marketing Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mackenzie Jaquish, and I'll be right back. The Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast, the show that gives you advice on everything travel. We explore places you've always wanted to go, as well as giving tips for traveling in those places. We'll give you advice on the best sites for travel tips, information, and discounts. Join us as we travel the world, explore cultures, and meet new people. The Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast has got you covered. Download the GSMC Travel Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. GSMC Marketing Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mackenzie Jaquish, and thank you so much for joining me on today's episode. I've had a ton of fun talking about Disney and Disney's marketing campaigns with you guys, so I'm super excited to hear your feedback on today's episode. So make sure you are writing in the review down below, make sure you're subscribed, and also reach out through social media if you have any questions about what we talked about on today's episode. So now to wrap things up, I am going to give you my top 10 suggestions of other companies you can follow that aren't Disney if you're looking to be inspired by a really big company's marketing and take a look at what techniques they're using that maybe you can take for inspiration in your own marketing. Number one, Starbucks. I talk about Starbucks. I talk about Starbucks a lot on this podcast, and I talk about it so much because they do what Disney does in the way that everything they produce, all the content they produce, has a similar feeling and a similar experience, right? When you're on their Instagram, when you're hearing a commercial, when you see 
a poster, when you're in the actual shop, you get that similar experience. So definitely look at Starbucks if you're looking just to create a rock solid brand. Coca-Cola does what Disney does in a similar way of that nostalgic feeling, but is always creating new content. So Coca-Cola has been in everybody's life for their entire life, you know, especially me. I mean, there was never a time that Coca-Cola wasn't around. And I'm sure for everyone that listens to the podcast, that's true for them as well, because it's been around for like ever. I hate to sound like a teenager there, but it's true. So it's definitely a nostalgic brand, but they're always pushing their limits to see what new thing they can create to keep that audience coming back. Whole Foods Market. So one, I shop at Whole Foods and I love it. But two, the reason I think you should copy their marketing is because all of their, not copy, the reason you should take inspiration from their marketing is because everything they produce has a purpose. They're looking to educate and inspire people with what they're producing. And so I think that's really amazing because That's something that not every company takes advantage of. We all have a story to tell and Whole Foods Market definitely takes a lot of chances to tell their story and to tell other people's story and also to educate people. Speaking of storytelling, Nike also does this. So Nike is really great about telling stories, but also inspiring you to tell your own story. They want to push their audience to do more. They want to see what you can create on your own with their product. So it's super interesting to see how they always flip the conversation so that it's not what can we do for you, but what can you do for yourself using our product? So that's super interesting and definitely something to take a look at. Number five is Staples. And the reason Staples is on here is because I need everybody to go take a look at Staples Instagram right now. We're going to talk about companies that do a similar thing, but I got to be honest, Staples takes ordinary products, i.e. office supplies, and they make hilarious and extravagant Instagram posts using like nothing at all using staples. And it's just so amazing to see the amount of creativity and imagination that goes into the staples brand and the content that they produce. Number six is Netflix. So obviously I spent a lot of today talking about Disney plus and how Disney plus has, you know, so far been winning the Netflix versus Disney plus streaming service battle. But that doesn't change the fact that Netflix is definitely very aware of what their brand is and how to market it appropriately. I've talked about in other podcasts how Netflix has recently started selling Netflix and chilled ice cream with Ben and Jerry's. So I think Netflix is able to laugh at itself and also create content from there because they're just so aware of what their brand is and what they give to the community. Number seven is NBC. So NBC, I think, is very similar to like Coca-Cola and Disney and the way that they understand that they have a product that is nostalgic. Like SNL might still be creating new episodes, but people really love seeing old clips of when Will Ferrell was on SNL. And they really love seeing clips from Friends, especially. Friends is really big on NBC again for some reason. And The Office and all of these shows that aren't on TV anymore and be still NBC still owns them and still markets them because they understand that that is why their audience is there and that is the content their audience wants to see. Number 8 is Amazon. So from everything from Amazon Prime TV shows to Amazon Prime delivery to Amazon's food delivery service, all of it is all cohesive and it's all in line with what the brand is and what the brand wants to achieve. So it's definitely on the list just for the sake of brand cohesiveness because it has such a strong brand. You see it everywhere. It's on all of its packaging and it's definitely just a great way to keep their brand in your mind. And I want everyone to remember that when they are creating their own brand products. Number nine is Wendy's. And Wendy's is so funny because it's funny. If you go onto Wendy's Twitter right now, you'll probably see a lot of sassy tweets, a lot of fun commentary on their own products. And similar to Staples, I just really love the fact that they know how to have fun with their product and they know that their audience wants to have fun too. So let's just relax and have fun and 
really just embrace the fun parts of marketing, which is getting to be creative with your product. And number 10 on our list is Apple. I'm sure nobody is shocked that Apple made this list, and I'm sure nobody is shocked that Apple is number 10 on the list. Apple has an almost bigger or even a similar budget as Disney, so they're able to do similar things, reach into different revenues, and produce amazing, amazing content for their audience. So I definitely take a lot of inspiration from Apple when it comes to my own marketing, and I definitely think you should take some time and look at their marketing strategies as well, because it might inspire you to do something new with your company. So definitely take a look at that next time you're looking for a little bit of inspiration. Okay, everyone, that is it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. I had so much fun talking about Disney and Disney's marketing. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about anything we discussed on today's podcast, write it in the review down below or reach out through social media. And I love talking to you guys over there, so definitely reach out if you have any questions or comments. So until next time, thank you for listening to the GSMC Marketing Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mackenzie Jaquish, and I'll see you next time. You've been listening to the GSMC Marketing News Podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on SoundCloud, Stitcher, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to any podcast app, and you'll find all of the shows from the GSMC Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, from business news to weird news, you'll find it all on the GSMC Podcast Network. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.